Newton's law of universal gravitation is an important part of our uh, discussion in um, understanding circular motion um, and you know just in general uh, how how uh, gravity works. So um, you know the main question here that we're looking at: um, if the force of gravity is being exerted on objects on Earth, what is the origin of that force? And so uh, it's important to think through that. Um, Newton wrestled through that. And, uh, you know, if we consider, you know, people on the different parts of the world here, um, they're all being pulled to the center of the earth. And so Newton realized that uh, it must, the force must come from the earth itself. And uh, he also realized that it must be what uh, keeps the moon in orbit as well. And so, um, you know the words of that force is the uh, is the Earth itself, and it turns out the mass of um, the different objects is the uh, is the cause. And so um, you know the Earth exerts a downward force on you, and you happen to exert an upward force on the Earth. And so you know if we uh, you know jumped into the air, and the Earth pulled down on me with 700 newtons, I'm pulling on the Earth with 700 newtons. Now. The inertia of the Earth is huge, right? So you're not even going to be able to get close to detecting, you know, any kind of movement with the Earth. Um, but with me, right, it would be pulled down, you know, pretty uh, pretty quickly. And so, um, you know, there's such a disparity in masses as, you know, you cannot even be able to, to tell. Um, but we definitely can tell with the moon, right? So if, you know, if the moon is on the side of the Earth where we are, uh, the water is being pulled up, and so we have high tide, right? And so, but if the moon is on the other side of the Earth, um, we have low tide, where the the water recedes and it's pulled on the other side of the Earth. Um, the way they uh, figured out the strength of this force uh, is with the Cavendish experiment. This is pretty uh, ingenious how they they set this up. Um, relatively simple. They had a fiber a mirror uh, that's attached to the fiber. Uh, light source that would hit the mirror, bounce off, and then go to a scale. Uh, rod with two masses. And so we bring uh, one of the masses close to the other one, and it would actually, these two masses would attract, uh, make the rod to, to actually turn. And as it did, uh, the mirror would turn. And then as the mirror turned, uh, the scale would show a deflection at a different angle. And uh, by knowing the masses of these, by knowing the, the how far apart they were, uh, they were able to figure out the force of gravitation um, between the two of them. Um, so what they discovered was the gravitational force is uh, proportional to both, both masses, so directly proportional to both masses. And uh, by observing planetary orbits, Newton also concluded that the gravitational force uh, must decrease with the inverse square of the distance between them. So, um, you know, we're going to see lots of squared relationships. This case, in this case, it's an inverse squared relationship where, you know, if you if you end up doubling the radius, how far apart they are, you only get uh, a fourth of the force. Um, or tripling the radius, you get a ninth of the force. It's an inverse squared um, relationship. And so this is the relationship. Um, we have the force of gravitation is equal to the gravitational constant G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times mass 1 and uh, mass 2. So we multiply the two masses together and divide by uh, the radius in uh, meters between them, and that radius is squared. All right, so let's uh, try this out with a, a sample problem. Uh, the uh, universal law of gravitation works for any any two masses. We can find the gravitational attraction between them. And so um, let's go ahead and do this with an uh, example uh, where we have uh, our, your mass and then the mass of a, uh, a desk. I want to figure out you know, how, much, uh, how much force of attraction is there between uh, between you and the and the desk, and so um, and at two meters away, so we'll we'll see the uh, you know this would be a good example to see the strength of it. So go ahead and pause the clip, and um, when you're ready to uh, see the final answer uh, to check your work, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so 
Uh, we've got our gravitational constant multiplied two masses over two meters squared, and we should get 2.22 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. And this is an extremely small number. I'll just write it out here. So we have, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Very, very, very small amount of force. So you're not even going to be able to detect that or get close to detecting that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and try this now uh, with something that's more massive. We have a 1,700 kilogram car. And uh, let's say our mass is 70 kilograms, two meters away. How much force of uh, gravitational attraction would be there? So go ahead and pause the clip and um, go ahead and calculate that out. You can uh, hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, we should get 1.9, a four times 10 to the negative six newtons. Again, a very, very, very small amount of force. Uh, you're not gonna be able to feel that. Okay, now in this case, uh, we can figure out the gravitational attraction between you and the Earth. And you can see the mass of the Earth here is, is huge. Um, be careful with your units here with the, uh, the radius. Um, and you can calculate the force of gravitation for the 70 kilogram person um, on Earth. And so go ahead and hit pause and uh, calculate that out and you can hit play when you're ready to check. Okay, so our radius is uh, 6,371,000 meters. And we have our two masses set up. Um, we should get a force of uh, 686.977 newtons. So this is, you know, what our what we predominantly actually feel on Earth, right? So the um, other forces, you know, of, of attraction between other masses are so tiny compared to this, and that's because it takes the entire Earth's mass, you know, 10 to the 24th kilograms, uh, to be able to pull on you just this amount. And so uh, it turns out that the force of gravitational attraction is, a, is one of the uh, weakest of the four fundamental forces because it takes a lot of mass to be able to uh, have, a, have um, you know, you know uh, a detectable amount of force. And so uh, the range is huge, though, right? If you think about uh, the sun here and we're located, uh, you know, out there, the uh, you know, it's a, over a huge, huge range, but, you know, it takes a lot of mass to be able to enact it. All right, so now what we're going to take a look at is uh, what would happen if you triple the distance between you and your desk? Now, for, you know, the practical purposes, you know, we looked at there's not much force at all, right? But if this was two celestial bodies um, and we change the, the distance by um, a third, um, you know, that would make a big difference that we would actually see, right? But even on the small scale, um, it still will be, you know, a certain amount less. And that's what we're going to do here. So when we do this, uh, we're going to set up a ratio of the new situation over the original. And then we can evaluate in a ratio form how many times greater or less this is. So um, we have the triple, the triple the distance. So uh, we'll have uh, the gravitational constant M1, M2. And then the new situation is we have uh, 3R, and then the original situation was uh, M1, M2 over R squared. So we don't even have any values. We're just going to evaluate what happens when we triple the distance here, right? So we can cancel the gravitational constant from the top and bottom, mass 1, top and bottom, mass 2 from the top and bottom. We're left with 1 over 3 squared R squared when we uh, bring the the squared value there and then one over r squared. So r squared is gone from the top and bottom and we're left with one ninth. So it's going to be one ninth as strong um, and that, uh, you know, by tripling the distance. And so it's an inverse squared relationship. Um, it's important to be able to see that, uh, that it's not just a third less, it's actually a ninth less because of that inverse squared relationship. All right, so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to take a look at what would happen if we um, had the 22 newton bag and we moved from the from Earth to a planet where the mass of the planet is half as much and the weight radius is twice as big. So uh, we want to find out the new weight of that bag. So what we're going to do is again set up a ratio 
of the new situation over the old. Once we get the ratio and we figure out how many times less or more, we can take that value, multiply it by 22, and get what the mass or what the weight would be. So go ahead and um, try to set this one up on your own. You can hit pause and um, try that, and then when you're ready to uh, check in, you can hit play to continue. All right, so we've got uh, one half of uh, one of the masses. If we call the, the planet itself mass two, you can do that. Then twice the radius uh, down here. And then um, we can cancel the uh, radius and the G and M1 from the top and bottom. We're left with one half over four. Uh, multiply the top and bottom by a fourth. And we get an eighth. So it would be one eighth as, uh, as much weight. Multiply that by 22. So the weight of this bag on this planet would actually be uh, 2.75 newtons. So we looked at how the Cavendish's experiment uh, allowed them to determine the strength of the gravitational attraction, and uh, you know the uh, we've looked at how the mass of a person and the mass of the Earth multiply those two divided by the radius between the center of the person and the center of the Earth and multiply that by the gravitational constant will give us the uh, force of gravitation. Um, and what we're going to look at now is uh, how, how do we end up talking about the acceleration due to gravity? And so um, if we consider that, right, we have, uh, uh, let's say, an object here above Earth and it's going to fall to the Earth and we have the Earth here. Um, Let's call the, uh, the, the object M1, we'll call the Earth M2. So if we um, consider that, right, we have the, the object here, the mass, uh, we have the force of gravity, the weight of that is M1g. And um, let's consider that as this portion right here. And uh, so we have G, M1, M2. Um, and M2 is the Earth, so ME, we could call that. Um, and if you notice, what we can do is we can actually divide both sides of this by M1. And if we do that, we divide both sides by M1, we're left with this. And G is the acceleration due to gravity, which is only dependent upon the mass of the Earth and how far away we are from the center of the Earth. And we multiply that by the gravitational constant. So, for instance, if we're, you know, let's say we're on a mountain, not to scale, right? Mountain on Earth, and our radius is greater, R is going to be larger. And if R is larger, that means uh, G is going to be less. And so, you know, if we're on, you know, Mount Everest or something, it may, the acceleration due to gravity may be uh, something more like this. I can't remember exactly off the top of my head versus you know, negative 9.81 here at uh, sea level. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is uh, gravitational field strength. This is the force exerted per mass. And so uh, we, we just looked at that example. Um, here's, here's it worked out again, you know, fully. Um, and this is another name that we could talk about this. This is the for force exerted per mass, meaning that uh, we find that gravitational value and we can multiply it by any mass and get uh, whatever that uh, force is. Um, and so, so another way to um, talk about what that is, is we take the force of gravity, right? And we divide it by mass. So this is force exerted per mass. And that's another name that we have for acceleration due to gravity. All right, so an astronaut drops a bag on the moon, and uh, the acceleration due to gravity is measured as uh, 1.62 meters per second squared. The radius of the moon is uh, 1,737.4 kilometers. We want to find the mass of the moon. And so we can work our way backwards in this case to find the mass of the moon. Um, and why don't you go ahead and use what you just saw there. Um, with the uh, values that you've been able to um, to use for uh, the force of gravitation and gravitational acceleration and um, solve for the mass of the moon. So go ahead and pause the clip and solve for that. And then when you're ready to check, you can uh, hit play to continue. Okay, so we've got uh, the uh, value for the, how far away? Um, 100. Uh, what is this? Uh, 
1,737,400 meters is the radius. And we have the force of gravitation, cancel mass from both sides, acceleration gm over r squared. We know everything except the mass of the moon, and we can solve for that. And the value is 7.33 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. All right, so let's try this. Uh, gravita the calculate the gravitational field strength on a planet 10 times as massive and a radius that's 20 times as large. So go ahead and set up your uh, ratio to evaluate this. And um, you can hit pause and, and try that. And then uh, when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. OK. So our um, gravitational field strength gm2 over r squared, new, new ratio over the old, uh, 10 times as massive, 20 times the radius, and uh, we end up getting uh, 10 over 20 squared r squared. The uh, radius squared is gone, 10 over 400, so 0 0.025 is much, so much, much less. Um, even though we have more mass, the radius is so large, um, it's going to be much, much slower acceleration, 0.245 meters per second squared, much more than the original. Okay, so now let's calculate the acceleration of free fall at a height of 300 kilometers from the surface of Earth. The Earth's radius is 6.68 times 10 to the 6 meters. The mass of the Earth is approximately 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And so in this one, we can calculate the acceleration of free fall. Um, you know, a decent amount of distance from the, the surface of the Earth. So go ahead and pause the clip and uh, give this a try. And then when you're ready to check, you can hit play to continue. Okay, so our total radius, we add up the radius of the Earth and the radius that uh, we have to go to there. So the total radius is uh, nine, or 6.9 eight times 10 to the six meters. Um, that's the total radius. Um, and again, remember it's from the center of the two bodies, right? So, um, you know, we don't want to just use the 300 kilometers. Um, and we can set up, uh, you know, divide mass from both sides. We get the acceleration and we should get an acceleration 8.21 meters per second squared. So even at that, uh, you know, that altitude, um, you know, still a decent acceleration. 